Oh, just I should probably get the music. Probably play a tune here. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think you should do that, T. <laughs> uh, it did not work out well. The stream got demonetized. I mean, Badge Bros, they're they're trying to turn this into a business. We got memberships, and if you're constantly demonetizing, killing the stream, how are they supposed to grow? Uh, hate to cut you off like that. We do, in fact, have T. Box on the show today. Very excited about that. Hundred days smoke free for T. Box, and what did the fine folks at Underdog do? They spun up a rake-free contest in his honor. We're going to talk about that today on Off and on the Clock. Rip some drafts and, of course, hang out with the legendary T-Box. Let's roll. All right, off and on the clock here. We will get uh, our overlays going. We're a little discombobulated today. As you guys know, uh, this is not... Uh, live to the viewer, StreamYard's actually having a YouTube to StreamYard connectivity issue. So we had to improvise on the fly. We're recording this locally and uploading it shortly after. So we will miss you guys in the chat. You can leave comments though. Let us know how much you love T-Box on the stream. But Badge Bros, I'll let you guys take it from here and uh, and reintroduce our guest of honor. I, I couldn't even I didn't even hear a word you just said because I'm looking at this Chippendales get up over here. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you bring you bring out you bring out underdog royalty and Sirius XM royalty for that matter with Pete's. I thought you guys were a little underdressed. I thought this was a black tie event. So I got that. I got best day ever thing. Hundred hundred days. We got noisemakers. Got the little hand clapper. I'll courtesy of Walmart, like five dollars for the bag. So yeah, you know, I just thought I'd spice it up, make this thing a little classy. Look at that. I mean, if you're doing Chippendales for a 100, I I, <laughs> I kind of believe that when you come on for 500 days smoke free, you're just gonna be fully naked. I mean, that is the logic. <laughs> Pro progression. Probably. That's, progression. <laughs> That's gonna demonetize the channel forever. Then yeah. we're, just, <laughs> we're out of here. We're, we're, we're gone. Or Magic, just complete Magic your guys' transition to an OnlyFans. That could just complete that. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. we are, we're practically getting there with all these paid subs. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. No, I just, I don't know. We can take that off. <laughs> yeah, get get, get, oh. get comfortable. So, yeah, T-Box, there, for people who go to Underdog right now, uh, there is a contest named after you. Uh, first of all, let the people know how it happened. And also as someone who's such a high volume player, uh, how surreal is it to see a contest named after you in the lobby here today? Yeah, that part is insane. I mean, certainly there's been a few name things out there, but they've been more uh, underdog affiliated, for instance, like the Pat Mayo or a badge Bros brawl yeah. or, or stuff like that. Never, at least in, that I know of anything for a player. And I don't know. I just, it, they're just so nice to to do something like that um yeah i mean i it was back in december my my mother-in-law said hey you for christmas you should you know quit smoking for me and i'm like ah whatever you know but i'm like ah what the hell i'll give it a shot and i stopped on december 23rd haven't had one since um so yeah and that's where we come here to 100 days but i so appreciate underdog thank you underdog i mean Thank you, Brandon and Jeremy. I mean, the fact, not, I mean, to not only have a contest, but have a rake-free contest. I mean, they're they're giving up eleven thousand dollars to do this, and it's just mm -hmm. that's that's insane to me that that the fact that they would do that. But also, I mean, thanks to Rudman and Gator and Berm and Cameron and Oaks and Andre and Nicole, Steve, Numi, Hope, and anybody else that I forgot. Um, but yeah, so it's yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And so you're probably just going to put like one or two entries into this thing. I well, I've got a hundred in. I've got a hundred in so far, and I'm just waiting for the last fifty for these last Q take things to start really falling. But I don't know. So far, other than Paul George, I've been exactly everybody who's been out is who I thought would be out. So got kind of lucky that way. Hopefully, hopefully it pays off. I'll ask John and Nez. Uh, you know, having your own contest named after you, that's, you know, one ring of legendary status. But shipping your own contest, you just <laughs> transcend to immortal underdog status if you do that? Absolutely. I mean, like, I could never. Uh, so that we we were in, never in jeopardy with the Badge Bros Brawl that I would ever ship that thing. But today, there's a legitimate chance 
that T Box could ship this contest, and that would uh, absolutely immortalize the, the the legend that is. Yeah, that would be tough. <laughs> but, <laughs> we used but, to yeah. have the, the contest named after uh, a Wob uh, Wob Wednesdays uh, yeah. last season, and now it's the Hump Day Hoops. And I think I, 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 the goal for this channel, I think, is to get large enough that we can call that the Wednesday contest and, and, and then name it after after me and then uh, I'll, I'll never ship that one but that would just be just like too too perfect if you took this thing down tonight uh cory that'd be awesome yeah hey, and then also one other thing before we're done I, I i have a story that a lot of people would love to hear it's just it's insane i mean i can tell it now yeah but... tell it now. What are you, why are you yeah. holding you out on jesus that? like that yeah. I'm not telling. okay so this is my john imagine this picture this um so obviously you, you have a you have a company that starts out in dfs we'll call this company underdog um and then you have some players that start to play for instance i don't know let's call one of them t-box so so he's he's in their plane he's doing whatever um a couple guys come along they call themselves the badge bros have a show and then they uh they have this t-box guy on for the very first time He's on the show, and we're talking about players and stuff like that. And then I, I remember this T box guy saying that I think Sam Olson is by far the best. I mean, we're we're naming names, Freezer, and and all that. But um, I, I where I said I think Sam Olson is probably the best player out there. Okay, blah blah blah. Fast forward, you guys have your show where you do your rankings, and you have Sam on there, number one, obviously legit. You throw me on there, and whether it's because I'm good or just play a lot, who knows. But, <laughs> but okay, so you have all that. And then it was about a month ago, I post, Sam, Sam won a contest, and I posted, I wish I knew what you look like, Sam, because right now my vision of you is just this guy walking around with freaking gold horns coming out of your head. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. And... To me, the, the name Sam Olson always kind of sounded familiar. So then Sam actually reached out to me, and he said, when I saw you on the show the first time, he was kind of floored of what the fact that I said him, but he, he recognized me. So here's where we go. Sam Olson and my son went to middle school together, went to high school together. What? Went to the same college. They played like, they weren't the best of friends, but I, I remember my son saying, that's where the name sounded familiar to me. Like, I, I don't know, I'm going to Sam's house or something. So little, little do you know, as far as me and Sam, I was at his middle school graduation. I was at his high school graduation. I was at his college graduation. Oh, my God. I was coaching the high school bowling team while he was at high school. Not not that he bowled or anything, yeah. but and then it gets it even gets even crazier. Apparently, and now in a totally different city. Apparently, Sam's dad and myself went to high school together. Oh my god! You're like, kidding? What? Yeah, I, he was a year older than me. I didn't really hang out with him, but yeah, same high school, same whatever. So. I don't know. I mean, I live in Appleton, Wisconsin. I don't know if Sam still lives in Appleton. That I don't know. I mean, he he, he may have moved, but Appleton, Wisconsin is the 101. <laughs> of, of <laughs> I underdog. love that. What I know? love that. And, and the, Appleton. The fact, the fact that of the million, I, I mean, to make the story sound great, I'll say millions. The millions of players on underdog, there and the go. fact that you pick two people and we are tied that closely is it's insane. Something in the water, man. That's yeah. Like so the bloodlines and the lineages of underdog Mount Rushmore tied together. I love that, man. That's yeah, incredible. And, yeah. And you know, where his name sound familiar too. Cause like I said, you know, they, at the graduations, I call a name and you know, it's yeah. just, it, it just always sounded familiar to me, but why would I expect them to live in the same or be from the same area I am? So apparently Sam is a math whiz, um, <laughs> which makes sense. And yeah, so congrats to that. And I don't know, talk about a small world story, but that is wow. a small world story. I'm just and I, I, I got his permission. I got his permission. I'm like, can I mention something about this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, go for it. So I'm not like throwing him, you know, 
Yeah, doxing him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, I don't know. He seems to be kind of a private guy, which I uh-huh. yeah. I mean, the, the amount of times I've reached out to be like, "Yo, come on the show, man! Yeah. Like, do anything, do a paywall, cover your face, do whatever you want." And he's like, "Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Like, nope. That's I'll leave that to the other guys, kind of thing." Yeah. So Sam, Sam would be about Numi's age because they're all. You know, my son is that same age, and so they're right, right in that area. Well, Numi is your son, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Look, Especially with the haircut now, he looks even more like him. <laughs> he's growing Thank up. Now. Looks, yeah, handsome young man now. I know he's going to be mowing lawn before you know it. <laughs> um, so you got the contest uh, in your honor tonight. Give people a little bit of background on how that actually came about. Obviously, the 100 free days uh, smoking. You've been sharing more about kind of just your life in general on social. I very much enjoyed following you, but this was born out of kind of sharing what you were going through with that. Yeah. So I, I just, I put out there, it was like one week of being smoke free. So you're still in December. And I tweeted just more along the lines of anyone who's battled alcoholism or drug addiction or whatever, eating disorder, what whatever it might be. And the fact that they, if they overcome it, it just hats off to them because I'm one weekend and I'm just biting my fingernails and I, I didn't really get ornery. I mean, I, it's not like I ticked off my wife at all or anything like that, but <laughs> I would just, I would just get, you know, just, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Yeah. And and so that game, I sure I shared that. And then, then I shared that I was like 30 days uh, smoke free. And then Gator reached out to me. And he's like, hey, uh, we're looking to maybe do this for you, some sort of contest. He said he had to get everything approved and all that, but he just wanted to make sure that I'd be cool with it before he even went down those, down that rabbit hole. And I'm like, yeah, that would that'd be great because it just, I don't know, the, j- just like my tweet this morning, I, the fact that a company would even think of doing that for a user, right. for a user, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not the boss's son i'm not you know relative you know whatever <laughs> yeah. it, it's just the fact that hey you're just here's some users on there a lot don't get me wrong but yeah so to do a concert like, or a contest like that just phenomenal I, the, the, that's the biggest thing though like we've talked about this at nauseum with our community and with whatever is like underdog we actually all feel like friends and i don't know how that happens with a company because like i couldn't name you know five employees at, at redacted or whatever. And I used to spend a lot of money on redacted playing, playing all the time. Right. And what about at the know, poker I'm, sites you used to play at? Did you know employees? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, oh, I, at one, one time or another, I was one of them, but like, yeah, I mean <laughs> like I, I literally only had like VIP handles or like two or three other players that were like sponsored pros to be like in contact with. I never had like this kind of connection. And right off the top there, T-Box, when you're talking about the amount of people that reached out to you or that you have contact with, whether it is just via Twitter, email, whatever it is, like the fact that you name like, you know, Brandon by name, you named Rudman by name, you name all these people. Like, how crazy is that, that this like company is like, it's almost like this pseudo internet family that we've created or they've created. Yeah. And they're just, they're just so transparent and and it's Mm. so, I mean, you have to be transparent for me to even know these names because it, yeah, I mean, I, I'm certainly new to Twitter. haven't even been around for a year at all, but the fact that even when I did run, it was Rudman right away. And he's like, mm-hmm. you gotta, you gotta follow this guy. You gotta follow this guy. And, and really Rudman was all I knew. I mean, that was, that was underdog to me was Rudman. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, um, yeah. And that, well then Rudman is the one when I was on your show the first time he, he said, Hey, there's, there's these guys they are kind of starting out. And I'm like, I don't know if that's for me. I'm not too much of a touter guy or, you know, I'm more of a, Hey, turn it out. I, neither I, are we. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I thought I was more of the Barry Sanders, just hand the ball to the ref after scoring a touchdown <laughs> and, and which I was, but then all of a sudden, I don't know, you start playing to the bit and stuff. And I, I, I've been having a good time with it. Um, and then when I did the jogging video during with the last couple of weeks <laughs> yeah. uh, for the dog bowl that was left. And it, yeah, then I don't know, I got like 20,000 views. I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll have a little bit of fun with this. And, and then, you know, I s- certainly let people into a little bit of my world and yeah. 
and 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 I only find it right to do because the people at Underdog, they're out there telling about their world, and mm-hmm. you know it's it's just not it's not customer it's not company customer. You know, you know, give me your money, thank you. We'll provide a service for you. It's it's just so much more than that, and and down to even you guys, and certainly Pete. You know, doing all his shows, and I, I love listening to when um, Fantasy Life was on is on uh serious yeah i mean you, you you just you're you're pete i mean i'm not you know trying to pat your back too much but you, you just you, you're you're easy to listen to of all the people on serious you're the, you're the easiest the most entertaining and the funniest person to listen to and it's i don't know hats off to you oh, that's that's nice of you it's all it, i was actually just talking to someone about serious today and it, you know i was even saying how siloed it is you know like you do youtube and you get to get instant feedback or you get a comment or live chat or discord or whatever even on twitter you post something like sirius xm is like your listeners you know they're listening in the car so they're not even giving you feedback and maybe they call in but that's few and far between so yeah. that it's nice to uh occasionally get feedback about sirius because uh that doesn't happen but yeah i i also think to your point you know i do a show uh with brick 75 one of the top dfs players and the whole reason too like he was interested or one of the reasons to start doing the show is like it is a solitary exercise like playing these games at your desk like you could theoretically like do this completely on your own pull out your projections draft your teams and never interact with essentially anyone in the way it like adds i don't know this extra element or layer to it builds a world out around it and that makes it feel more joyful and i think we're all naturally socialized you know people and it, it just makes it such a funner endeavor when you get to share it with other people yeah and and well for instance ned nez winning baseball last night i, I was legit happy for him sure, sure. I, was, I, I was pissed but <laughs> yeah. I mean, do i wish the five thousand dollars was in my account absolutely but <laughs> but but having someone win that you know as opposed to well there's you know Johnny one two three four five. You know <laughs> he, he won. I mean, good for him. But he, yeah. So and it's obviously not just Nez and not just John. It's I mean, there's hundreds of people now that mm-hmm. I know, and and yeah, legit happy for him for sure. It's it's so funny, yeah. man, because like this never like you said like this this is pretty new as in like the last like year and a half. And I remember being at my work computer you know, doing these six entry max baseball contests, like trying to find dark sheep. I'm like, I wonder if I could find this guy on Twitter. Cause I'm in there battling with these guys like every single day. Like, I, I want to just like say, Hey, like, you know, try to find him. And I couldn't, it was so hard finding like anybody. And now it's just like, it, it's weird if I don't know somebody who's got right, a red yeah. badge on the it's, app, the way it, that it's just like yeah. kind of turned into this like friendly competition for the most part is just like really, really cool. And just, yeah, I don't think that that, you, that is the natural progression for a peer to peer game like that. No, no I, I, mean, I, I can speak to it from like the poker side, like what Pete was saying before is like, man, I was that dude for like 10 years, like just in complete solitude, didn't talk about it. Didn't, didn't do any content. Didn't like, I, I mean, I got a couple coaching videos that you can go dig up in the archives of blue fire poker from back in the day with Galphon <laughs> and shit. But like, outside of that i didn't do anything like that so as soon as we discovered these games i i took the complete opposite approach where it was like what you said as i reached out for you and knew me and tried to find all these people and then as soon as we started doing a little bit of content it was like we got to find t-box we got to find sam Olson. and now it's amazing how you know everyone's just together now it's great so how, how did you got you two meet each other like through say one of pete's discords or something or yeah, basically, like it was yeah. just like I we went hunting on Twitter, hunting in. Di- I mean, I'm a Discord boomer, so yeah. it, it yeah, you know, it took it you happened. forever to get in there. <laughs> it did. I forgot I'm that. Just a, I'm just a Twitter reply guy, man. That's all I was. Do you, do you still use Discord in the web too? Do you even have? Yeah, the app? I don't have the app. Yeah, I have the web <laughs> right here. <laughs> you have it on, it on your phone, for you. right? You have it on your phone. Uh, I right? try not to. I don't have notifications on my phone for Discord. I don't either, but yeah. I, I I like the Discord phone app is good. It's smooth. Okay. Yeah, it's, it just cracks <laughs> me up. So yeah, yeah, John John hit Numi and I because we were doing some streams on Spike Week for, for baseball. Okay. And then I had tried my hand at some like long form uh, MLB best ball content. Uh, you know, very sage content, if I might add, uh, predicting <laughs> the zero pitcher meta in yeah. MLB best ball. People forget. 
Uh, ahead of your time, Ned. Many are saying. <laughs> that, the editing in that video is so sloppy, though. Don't go find that. It's just, <laughs> just, just take my word for it. Yes, because our streams now are a beacon of perfection. I mean, dude, there's some, uh, there's some awful cuts. I'm like, that, that's just like so me to just not even have the energy to go through and do like a rough draft. I'm like, yep, yeah, this is good. <laughs> and like me clearing my throat and swallowing uh, for two seconds is actually great video. Uh, oh, Corey, I gotta tell you this. Um, last night I stopped by my uh, parents' house uh, just quickly there. My mom, you know, how oh, how's the show going? Blah blah blah. Like they don't, I, I don't let them watch it or tell them where it is or anything like that. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah, it's great. Like I'm actually, we're actually having this guy on tomorrow. You know, hundred day smoke free. Told her all about you. Told her that you'd had him on in the past. She goes, oh, this guy sounds interesting. I was like, well, you got to see him on social. And I showed her the karaoke <laughs> from your fiftieth birthday oh, party yeah. singing, and then I showed her the air guitar, guitar <laughs> on opening day, and she goes, "Great, you're having your dad on the show tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's awesome. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I, like I said, ha have a little bit of fun with it, and I mean the video. Well, that the fiftieth, the karaoke video has been, well, obviously hanging around for a few years now, and. You know, it's my birthday, and and I remember I had it, and I was like, you know what? What the hell? I'll, I'll throw that on out there. Yeah. And yeah, thank God. There, you know, all, all my friends, like all whatever twenty people that might have been at the at the party. <laughs> so good. Yeah. What is what is your what does your wife think of all this? One, you started making content for strangers online and now you have a contest named after you is she believing this new kind of world you've created online for yourself yeah well she if she knew about the concept contest I, I didn't show it to her like you know the picture of it before yeah. she went, left for work this morning um but the last when i was on your show about a month ago and then i actually played it played it on youtube uh, like through our tv so she sat and watched it and she's not a sports fan at all. I mean, she knows she knows the Packers play twenty minutes up this up up the street. <laughs> that's about it. And um, so, since she goes, wow, you kind of have like this whole little secret world. She goes, and I, and I go, I go. Well, it's live here on TV. I mean, it's I wouldn't call it too secret, but um, so yeah. So I don't. Know, she laughed at it, um, and she knew. Like I, I said, I wanted to get a bow tie. So, yeah, I mean, she knew she knew I had the bow tie. She knew I bought all this little trinkets. And uh, she gets a kick out of it, but doesn't, you know, I mean, like I said, she's not a sports person. So, yeah, it doesn't mean too much to her. Yeah, But it doesn't surprise her too much that you're, like, diving in and <laughs> leaning into this. No. I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, I will not – I mean, my goal is to make her laugh every day, so it's kind yeah, of similar. It's, it's kind it's of similar profound. Too. That is profound. Yeah. yeah. So me doing what I'm doing is really no different than what I do in the house on a regular day. That's awesome. <laughs> so do you? Uh, do you guys have? Do you have any alpha T box? Is there any unique considerations? If someone were trying to win your contest, uh, are you willing to uh, to share some some tips? Or are you keeping that close to the vest tonight? I, I mean, a little bit close, but t tonight's so so weird. Like, I mean, I did my rankings, and I, I was pretty accurate on the, like, who's been out so far. But yet, I'm like, at that, before I knew that I was right, or ish, right-ish, I'm like, well, what if I'm wrong? <laughs> Always, every Cause, day of my cause life. Because th then I am letting so many people go undrafted. So I actually ran 40 40 lineups through just autoed, but on whatever the current ADP was, I never do that ever. But tonight, I don't know, maybe because of the contest in your name, or <laughs> if, if they could, if they could pick a day that's just so jacked up in the NBA of what, what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, today was it. And so I did, I did my original rankings. I did, an 80 just straight ADP uh, and let the chips fall where they may. And then, uh, and then I kind of did a hybrid, but I don't know. I've just, I don't know. How, did you get, did, did, were you, did you run good on uh, Russell Westbrook? Do you have a good well, amount of rest? I, I was, yeah, but now he's questionable. Ooh. Yeah. But he, if he's the only one that's like, I mean, they have nobody. 
Right, Norm yeah, Powell well, season, baby. Well, then what, it's what was weird is season for you, John. <laughs> I know. Cause I I'm like big on the spreads and, and, uh, uh-huh. it, obviously, uh, yeah, it's, it's Memphis. I think Cleveland's playing Memphis, right? Yeah. Yeah. 18 okay. and a half point favorites. Correct. But yeah. so it was like, I don't know. It was like Cleveland 116 and like, and whatever, 92 for Memphis or something like that for game total. And then I switched back over to it and it had, and I don't know if it's just a glitch or what that happened, but also it had like Cleveland 95 to like 88 for like the total, the total, the, the total total was 162 or something like that. And I'm like, are you kidding? What the hell's going on? And then all of a sudden it switched back. But oh, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to think with that stuff, but let's, uh, let me uh, just lay the land for everyone who's watching, who's not as tapped in with the NBA stuff or, you know, pizza hoops guy, but he might not be in the, in the, the micro of the streets today or whatever. It's, it's a little bit of silly season in terms of like the Grizzlies literally have seven. You have to have eight NBA basketball players to field a team. Brandon Clark's going to be active and not play tonight. They're going to have seven basketball players. Like, on their roster and like three or four of them are on 10 day contracts. Then Atlanta has, there, there's a whole bunch of teams on back to backs and a whole bunch of teams with playoff implications. Atlanta may or may not have Trey young coming back tonight, which is a big one. Toronto just ruled out Kelly Olynyk and somebody else, RJ Barrett. Barrett, Barrett. Yeah. Yeah. So that one's kind of messy. And then there's a couple games where teams are playing for literally their most important game of the season and that's probably bucks in orlando that would be minnesota and denver and that would be dallas miami those are all like you know these games really matter to us so those are kind of like the tighter spread whatever and then everything else but because there's a bunch of back-to-backs we didn't have injury reports we just got one 20 minutes ago so we're gonna have a whole bunch of uh new information and a news dump here to work through as well. So yeah, there are then, a lot of moving parts to the D box slate. And then to add on to that, then you have people like Cat and Trey Young who haven't played in like two months. Oh, they might play today yeah. though. It's just like you can, yeah. I mean, so the Cat one now got switched to doubtful. Yeah. So maybe that one's a little less likely. And the Trey Young one. This is my hot take of the day. The spiciest take I got going. He is the best pick on the slate. Period. Trey Young. Ray Young's the best pick on the slate. They, they're he's been doing conditioning behind closed doors. It was a left hand. Sounds like T box. In- yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, T box does his on stream now. That's yeah. true. Yeah, mine's <laughs> in front of everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got a left finger thing, so it was non shooting hand, and he's been doing the the conditioning behind closed doors. And then they just gave Dejounte Murray uh, the Q tag, and they sat out. Uh, Jalen Johnson already so I I was taking him in the sixth round over and over and over again and now I think he's gonna slowly move up like fourth yeah I mean you you could be right I I famous last I, words Steve yeah I I, I I don't think I've ever been right I could see him only playing 20 minutes too I mean I know it's yeah like a finger not conditioning or, I mean not like a he had a he had a knee or something like that but I don't know. You never know. It's also Charlotte, right? So it's like they could blow the brakes off them and he only plays, you know, 20 to 25. You're right. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, I just think it's almost buyer beware on anything you take tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, very much so. So you, I mean, we've talked about your strategies and stuff in the past. How we we classify the the the, the hyper exploitative strategy as the T box now? Um, is that something you said you did some ADP stuff? But are there there's some targets for you that you were getting really overweight early this morning? Yeah, I was I was over definitely overweight on both Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller, and it, okay, um, it just kind of fell where they fell. Um, I mean, the strategy I use it's it pays off, but as we were talking earlier before we even started recording this, it's also can screw you where I had 59, 59% Nas Reed last night and he gets two technical fouls and he's out. And- <laughs> the softest flagrant two I've ever seen in my life, by the way. 
Oh, there, really? I didn't see it. Oh, I mean, it? he was he was getting boxed out, and he gave like a little like forearm shove to the back of the head, which like, hey, you shouldn't do that. But they tossed him, and it wasn't like a a hit; it was like a shove. You know what I mean? There's, it wasn't like a hard blunt force, and they gave him the flagrant two unnecessary uh, physical movement, and yeah, and then it, they they toss him. So them's the break sometimes, and uh, not fun because I have a lot of Nas read myself. Yeah, how yeah. do we solve? How do we solve this issue, Nas? what's the issue here the, the we the allow referee? fighting in all sports we oh, allow fighting right. in all sports have you heard this then... take from john <laughs> it's kind of brilliant you don't take you don't take elbows to the back of the head because then you got to answer the bell guys are guys mind their actions more it's the hockey mentality across all sports you go low on the quarterback well then you got to take your helmet off and square off against an offensive lineman there you go nobody goes low on the quarterback anymore <laughs> I think I'm going to draw a line. I, I like I like John's idea. I don't think the NBA should adopt it. I think baseball should, though. I mean, baseball is what needs it. Like, let these guys let the hands yes. fly during the best bench clearing brawls. These NBA guys, they're too pristine of athletes. They're they're the best we've got. We can't have them getting sucker punched on the court. <laughs> You're right. It's a beautiful nonviolent game. We got it. We got got to yeah. keep got to keep it that way. And plus, well, they're the, also, the John, Warriors would be overpowered too. John, your take to the hockey guys are literally wearing pads and helmets. You know, so like NBA guys are like a straight helmet, up though. raw knuckle. I mean, well, I, I don't I don't really follow hockey, but that game the other day where as soon as the puck goes out, it was just like so we're sick. just gonna fight. Yeah, it's like everybody just. <laughs> Yeah, I just I don't, I don't even know how that's a thing, but I don't it's, know. It was, it was entertaining. I'll, I'll give you the I'll give you the the ten second background on it. There was a bad hit by one of those players in the past, and that was the last time those teams played. Then he got suspended for a couple games. Then this was the first match in which they had played since first matchup they played since, and the, both coaches just like they're submitting their pre pre game rosters. And they submit like their three tough guys as the starting lineup, and you just know it's on. Where the coach looks at it, and he goes, "Up, oh, shit! Guess we got to put our three tough guys." And then they just <laughs> hand in their lineup cards, and then it's go time. It's a, it's a, it's a, a sworn upon pregame uh, uh, sanction where it's like an agreed upon handshake behind closed doors, without being said. So it's a pitcher going at the batter and letting you know I'm going at the batter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, exactly. Throw behind guy, like yeah, right off the bat. If you like, just plunk their star, like yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Great analogy. Um, should we uh, should we hop in a tee box here and make it official? I think you got it. Time. I unfortunately need to uh, dip out. I apologize. Our uh, the YouTube Streamyard rug pull. Uh, <laughs> demolish my schedule here, but T Box just want to say uh, appreciate you. Thank you for everything you do for Underdog and uh, making it so fun to draft with you. And congrats on the contest, man. Yeah, thanks, Pete. And yeah, always always nice to hear what you have to say for sure. Um, and like some majority of it is on the radio as opposed to streams. But <laughs> you know when I'm just kind of driving around. But uh, yeah, you're entertaining. And keep it up, man, for sure. All right, I'll have to sneak in a, a T box shout out uh, on the on the airwaves this <laughs> fall be for awesome. sure. <laughs> we'll do see it, you guys. Okay, Pete, you got to do it really subtly. Like you got to talk about like, hey, you're going golfing this weekend, and like, you know, I'm kind of scared of the first T box or like something like that. You got to like just work it in. You you want to challenge me in a golf head to head? Uh, you don't want this smoke. You want to be smoke free when you meet me on the T box. <laughs> oh, or something ooh. like that. Nice. <laughs> see you guys. The king, baby. Yeah. The Pete, king. No. No. <laughs> That was hilarious. That was, That's good. Awesome. That was very good. Um, all right, yeah. T Vox. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take my rankings out of here right now because classic they're... John Rug. Classic well, John Rug. You just throw no, you guys five lobbies. Okay. Oh, no, oh yeah, can... no, they can't. <laughs> they they, can't yeah, <laughs> they can't see yet. They can't draft with us yet. Doy. <laughs> um, we got the sorry, we got the Wemby out while we were talking. Yep. So what does that do for you guys? What does that open out? Uh, I'm not overly surprised by that one. I was taking him when he was falling a little bit there, but like just because the ceiling's so effing high, he had seven blocks last night. Like it's just, it's getting insane, man. It is absolutely um, absurd. I think for me, just real quick, I think it makes SGA a little more risky because like there's just, he's 
fresh off injury. They're so mm-hmm. much better than the Spurs. They really don't need him to play tonight. So that has me a little concerned. Yeah, I've, I've, been, go- I've been going with almost SGA being questionable all day. Um, okay. j- just for that, just, just yeah, for that matter. I mean, they they don't really – I mean, yeah, winning the game's nice, but they're just looking to not get anybody hurt. Or And if you can give somebody a little bit of rest, go for it right now. And especially Yeah, that's it. A- that's a good shout in terms of like there's not a ton they can do to move around. Like they they want to win because those top three teams are separated by a couple games, but like they're they know that the two teams behind them tonight in Denver and Minnesota, only one can win because yeah. they're playing one another, right? So I, I mean I'm not gonna say they have the one seed locked, but like you would think even without SGA, they can beat the Spurs tonight. And then one of those teams lose behind them, and they should just be fine to to lock down the one, right? Uh, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, okay. obviously, it opens the door for a little Zach Collins, but I don't know. I l- last year, like Zach Collins was my my probably the guy I had the most exposure to almost on a night nightly basis, mm-hmm. and now it's nothing since Wemby's been on the team. Um, yeah. But and I mean, still- even with even with Wemby out, man, on today's slate, I'm not even so sure. Like, like Zach Collins is like a a, a maybe for me in the six. Like, I don't even know that I like love him just because like it's just like the role has just been different. There's how bad this team has been. Because I used to be a Zach Collins stand. Yeah. Anytime no Wemby, I was going in on Zach Collins, and anymore, like the guy just hasn't hasn't shown me the, or at least hasn't done too well by me. No, and right now Zach Collins for me is will just be if I get him in a swap for anything that okay. happened earlier. Yep. Yeah, I like that call. Is anyone excited to get to any auxiliary Spurs and or Thunder? Like J Dub in the in the sixth round, Josh Giddy in the sixth round, um getting overweight Chet now that Wemby's out. Like is that something that interests you guys? Or like, I don't know, Malachi Branham, Champagne, Sandro, any of these guys tickle your guys' interest because there's going to have to be points scored in that basketball game, and it should be up tempo, don't we think? So, is there any interest? Uh, mine would be Trey Jones, if anybody. I think. Okay. Yeah, uh, a little Trey uh, Jones in the sixth or something, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as OKC, I'm not even sure if Jalen Williams is going to play today either. Okay. I've been kind of doing him as a almost a questionable. Yeah, I mean, he was questionable coming into yesterday. Yeah. Only played 27 minutes last night, I want to say. Yeah. I think I saw it earlier, 20-something. 20, 20 but, um, yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah, this game uh, this game got a little funky. Oh, wow, he played 35. I was wrong. He had 25 fantasy points. He played 35 minutes last night. So, definitely potential there for a little limited workload tonight. Yeah. Um, the Paul George one's already out. We can take that out of there. Um, T Box, who was your one zero one tonight? Was it? Were you going back to that Luca well, or do you like Joker more? I was Joker today. Okay. Yeah. Me Nothing too. about the the Go Bear matchup scares you guys. Not not really. And you know, like you said, it, what you just said before. I mean, one of the teams would love to win, so I mean, they're going to be going all out. Um, Dallas, you know, on they played yesterday. They pl- they did play yesterday, and they are ninety eight percent likely to take the fifth seed. So, like, not a lot of movement to go sure, around from yeah. Dallas. Uh, is Luke is Luca really going to play? I think he'll play, but wow! I just, we're, we're going just Luca might not play too. Wow! I didn't I, even I was, like I was factor doing, that I was, one in. I was doing Luca. Two in the two slot all day. Um, I didn't yeah, switch that up, but same. Like, I mean, there's no choice at this point. You kind of have to play it that way because, like, if he does, like, you don't want to forfeit Luca if he plays. But like, I'm saving some bullets because I really think that he's at risk. I mean, they can't they can't move from that spot, and they just played. They can't so, move. They can't move to jump the Clippers. They are 90, according to basketball reference, the Mavericks have a 98.7% chance of being the uh-huh. fifth seed um, with the Clippers as a 99% chance of being the fourth seed. Interesting. So there must be some holding of the tiebreaker or something there because 
the Clippers just ruled everybody out. I mean, it didn't matter last night versus the Suns. They they ruled everybody out versus the Suns last night, and they were up 30 at halftime. They're yeah, up 28 the or something at halftime there. I mean, shout out Russell Westbrook back on that triple-double train, like vintage Westbrook from you know five years ago with the 16, 15, 15 kind of thing. But that's that's very interesting information there because in my mind, it's like, oh, Clippers ruled everybody out. Maybe Mavs have a chance to win two in a row and jump them. But, it, but by the sounds of it, they hold some form of tiebreakers. So we could be at risk of this Luka thing. Yeah, I really think so. But like, man, Luka and Kyrie are for sure sitting on Friday when we go to that game. I know. <laughs> like 100%. You I shouldn't know. buy tickets yet. <laughs> I know, um, man. It's, I had somebody that has season tickets trying to like, pawn them off on me they're like i'm selling you for face value and i'm like actually i'm going with john and also like i think you know something that i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. maybe maybe i'll hold off on buying them i i clicked on six in a row this morning and i was like oh yeah we'll just do this and then wait till they I'll... get ruled out and then we can go for like a penny right okay <laughs> that's that's a good shout okay back to back to some of this stuff here uh t-box who were some of your other favorite targets in the first round there, you said you were treating SGA questionable. Did you move him behind Ant Edwards and Kyrie and such? Uh, I, 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 I kind of flopped him back and forth. He, I had him in front of Edwards, and then I flopped him behind Edwards. Um, okay. So, yeah, I had that. I still, I still was taking SGA in front of Irving. Just I'm, I'm thinking he's going to – I'm tr- I was treating him as questionable, but that doesn't mean he's out. And and SGA is SGA, but he did put up like 60 fantasy points last night. And I don't know. You, you just don't really need him. Where, where I could be hurting is I have a, I have a lot of Booker. And I, I knew the Clipper Clippers, a lot of those people were probably going to be out, which now they are. So, you know, are you going to need a ton of Booker? And so I'm, I'm a little mm-hmm. worried about that. I think I'm overweight in him. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Suns looked putrid last night. They didn't have a single player in double figures up until halftime. Maybe there's some like psychological, like, Hey, we, we got to come out here and beat the brakes off this team that did us dirty last night kind of thing, just to get our minds right for the postseason. But yeah. I tend to be in lockstep with you, especially with some of these veteran guys like this, that they, they lean the direction of, uh, let's just take care of our bodies and manage it. We we know we can beat the brakes off of them. Uh, we just don't have to kind of thing, right? Yeah. That's interesting. I feel like they would want to be playing to win. Yeah. What what standing-wise do you see there, Nez? Like, uh, we see them... It's pretty a game, spread. A game ahead of the Kings, a game behind the Pels. Yeah, I mean, I just see, you know, a range of outcomes of them, you know, like they can still, they have a 15% chance at the sixth seed. Okay. They Um, still have a head to head with the Kings, and then they got a tough one versus the Wolves, but the Wolves could be in a position where they're locked into the three seed and they decide to rest that last game, too. mm. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to want to win tonight. I just don't. I just don't know if they're going to need four quarters to beat them. That's man. that's sure, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if the team that showed up last night shows up again tonight, they're going to need all four quarters to lose to them. True. That's what they're going to need. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, some of your other favorite targets in the middle range here. Uh, we know you're a Milwaukee guy with uh, Giannis expected to miss the last kind of three games of the season. Here, uh, are we vaulting up Dame? Do we like Dame more than the field does? I I, I vaulted Dame up a bit, and I definitely vaulted Portis up. Um, oh yeah, likewise. Yeah, I got so, a ton of Portis right now. Yeah, I just he just whenever Giannis is out, he just he definitely is seems to be a twenty and ten guy, and mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean nothing wrong with that, and with your sixth pick, if that's where you're getting them, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And with like the ceiling potential to, to do more than that as well. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you, you alluded to, you, you liked the bridges stuff. Nez, how about you, man? What did you think about like some of the Miami stuff in the middle here? 
Uh, Jamal's got that Q tag now. That got added since we've been on the air. I guess Denver filed their injury report. Uh, not surprising, given yeah, how limited his minutes have been. Yeah, but Murray, I was actually thinking was doubtful today. I mean, I know he, mm. they never put him as doubtful, but in my mind, he was. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, for me, I think Miami still has a little something to to play for. Um, yep. They're locked. They're they're not locked into any spot at the moment. So I mean, I, it's hard to not love Miami against against uh, Dallas, right? I mean, this is feels like a really good spot. And you know, with everything in flux right now, what uh, do you know anything about? I honestly don't know anything about Rozier. Like I know if like is uh, he, is he out? tag. Q tag, but Hero already got ruled in after yeah. playing 47 minutes last night. So Hero is in uh, and Q tag for the neck injury to Rozier still. Hmm. Because I yeah. kind of like, I like Rozier against Dallas. Interesting. Okay. He's uh, he's free if you want him in the sixth round there. Considering I think everything in flux right now, like, and not, you know, a lot of uncertainty in the sixth, if Rozier is playing, like, I think he's going to play 30. And he just has the ability to get hot. And he's kind of had an increased handling role. He hasn't played a lot with Tyler Hero, I will say. So that's a good could, point. That could, like, you know, make things a little less concentrated for him. But uh, especially if Dallas ends up, like, you know, not really trying this game. But, like, Jason Kidd is such a donk that, like, he might actually <laughs> play Luca 40 tonight. He, he, he is the Dan Campbell of the NBA when it comes to games that don't matter at the Not end any of the season. At least Dan Campbell has redeeming qualities. Like Jason Kidd <laughs> doesn't even have, like, I mean, like what is he? He's a great he... passer in his day. In his <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. He, he would do the kid would do the same thing when he coached the bucks for like, well, when Giannis was a rookie, he was coaching them. And yeah, it, I thought he, I liked him as a coach, but then, yeah, he would just do things. And it's like, yeah, I think it was time for him time for him to go find something else to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this next little grouping here, we talked about uh, T-Box likes the Charlotte guys today. Pace up spot for them versus a depleted Atlanta team or potentially depleted Atlanta team. There's Q tags all over. Jalen Johnson already out. Um, I was pushing up Emmanuel quickly with no RJ Barrett and no Kelly O. Do you guys agree with my assessment on that situation, I kind of like the gross basketball game of the night in uh, Raptors and uh, Nets where neither team has anything to play for, but neither team can really benefit from losing either. They're kind of just locked in their draft positions. The Raptors have already done enough to protect that pick that they were tanking to protect. So I think they're just going to let wheels up on on iq tonight if i can pair iq and cam thomas together i'm i'm feeling that one right now that's a good call i mean yeah. i definitely like iq tonight so uh he's he's still questionable right i don't know that he I has got, a tag i i i when they dropped the injury report i believe he was not on it they okay. gave grady dick the q tag um for the groin ha 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 Ew. um <laughs> um we got scotty barnes out rj barrett out chris busher out bruce brown questionable grady dick questionable gary trent questionable kelly olenic out and then all the usual suspects uh, out so nothing they're nothing. verging on uh, memphis territory in terms of of available bodies if those q tags sit as well makes me like the iq handling rule yeah, I, I like that too. Um, and then Brooklyn, I, I've been going after Cam Thomas as well, but I don't know, man. Brooklyn's a goofy team. They're so yeah. annoying to project. They're like impossible to project. Especially, yeah. especially when we don't even get Claxton starting sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or they'll do their where they don't start any of them after halftime. It's yeah. Just, I mean, come on. But So, yeah, I, I like your quickly. Okay, cool. Um, anyone else you guys want to shout out in kind of this middle range chat? Um, you, we alluded to the Cleveland spread stuff uh, earlier there, T-Box. Do you like anything from Cleveland? They're, I like them all, but I also dislike them all. I'm, right. Because they're just, they're not going to, they're not going to just need to just hammer it. And 
one of them could go off, maybe two, but also you could just have a lot of them. There's every one of them are kind of a middle of the road sort of game. Um, yeah. They're just looking to get the win. So I, I've been taking them around where their ADP is, but I haven't been reaching for them at all. Okay. Yeah, I agree with your assessment there. Nez, anything else, uh, Cleveland, you want to say? Uh, no, nothing on Cleveland other than like, I'm taking them, you know, like I'm not, um, I'm not fading. It's the like, best me. thing I could say about them. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's tricky, man. It's hard to feel confident about like anything today other than, uh, you know, we're at this range and like Russell Westbrook. Now I would say his ADP is probably more like, uh, around like the three, four turn. Would, would you agree? Okay. I think it's going to push there. I mean, we haven't been in a, in a draft for the last 45 minutes since all the Clippers news dropped, but I imagine you're correct on that one. Does it scare you guys at all that, you know, they ruled everybody else out, but then they also gave him a Q tag. Does that scare you guys at all? Opposed to just being like, everybody else is out. Let's leave Russ and, and Russ is in. I don't I, I'm not like, like I, it's fair to like, to, to question, I just yeah. think someone has to play for them. And I think there's right. probably just like a truthful report that like, hey, he probably his hand probably is banged up, but like, I still think he plays. Okay. I I, I think he plays too. Cause it, I mean, if there's ever a player where, I mean, even three years ago, just phenomenal. I mean, you couldn't get enough Westbrook on your teams and then, you know, bouncing around, trading around, trading around, sitting, riding benches. And the fact that he'll have an opportunity to, be the alpha dog again. I mean, he's the type that will just revel in that. Mm-hmm. And hopefully the in- injury is not too much for him. But I last when I was taking him as ADP was like 31 or 32. I haven't seen it in well since we've been here. So 29.7 now. Okay. So it's which means he's now, I mean, that it only moved up two two points, but for that to do it, he's probably been going about 15 to yeah. to move it up that to move it up two points. Which yeah. is which is kind of about your three four turn ish that you're talking. I'm uh I'm having a conversation in my mind right now uh from last year when we dunked all over Numi for when the Clippers signed Russell Westbrook after he got waived and we were like that is so sharp that is so good run the second unit fill in in the regular season when the other guys are out and he cited us all this EPM bullshit and all this whatever (laughs) and it's like dude you can get a hall of famer for league minimum on your bench who cares about anything let them play 18 minutes on certain nights and then let them play 40 on other nights when everybody else is out and that's exactly what we saw last night where it's like russell westbrook when he goes peak russell westbrook can still just win you a basketball game and take over and that's so dope to see like i just love peak westbrook when what when West Westbrook's on like playing good ball, he's on ten. When he's playing mm-hmm. bad ball, he's on ten. So it, yeah. he's just he's just always yeah he's always going to give max effort for sure. Yeah, and, he's he's just he doesn't fit like being the eighth man on a team where he's has to play off ball right because he's just such a high usage guy. Everything he does is around the basketball even on the defensive end because he gets all those boards because he's always around the ball. Right. So everything he does is just straight. Like he's, he's TJ McConnell effort and steroids, like, (laughs) but like on steroids for talent. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) It's so true. That's that's such a, (laughs) such a good comparison. (laughs) Anytime I could sneak in a TJ McConnell reference, Nez, you know, I'm going to do it. The quote has been hit. The quote has been hit. Um, I did just very quickly uh, mm-hmm. update my my sheet with projections here. And Russell okay. Westbrook, where do you think he ranks out of uh, in projection out of like, th- the top thirty six? I think if they just treat him like he's in, like like the projection models usually do, and they just drop out tags on everybody else, and they treat Trey like Trey is in right now. I think he's ahead of DeJounte Murray in projections and he's kind of like side by side with like Paulo at like eight. Um, so I would, I would still think he's around 20. Still around 20. Okay. Projections have Russell Westbrook at player 12 right now. Yeah. Nice. Trey young player 15. 
Okay. Right by Cam yes. Thomas. Ooh, see that the, they like the models like Cam Thomas. Do the models like IQ right now? Uh, right by IQ as well. Yeah. Those guys, they seem like the obvious vaulters right now. Like if we could yeah. pinpoint some of the obvious guys that are that are jumping, it's it's Westbrook, it's it's Trey with the news there. It's Brandon Miller with the spot. It's Bobby Portis with like the potential usage uptick. And then is when things get funky. And I'd love to know your guys' opinion on who we kind of like deep, deep six round are kind of ranking 30 through 35 guys. Well, I tell you who I'm never going to draft is um, <laughs> Mikel Bridges. I'm not doing him ever. <laughs> I've sworn him off for the rest of the season. Godspeed if that's your cup of tea. I'm I'm a change man. I'm going through my 12 steps just like <laughs> T-Box with the cigarettes. Like, I'm quitting Mikel yeah. Bridges. I'll let you know whenever I'm at 100 days. Yeah, Mikhail we'll have free. a contest. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have, the, we'll have the bridge bridges over troubled waters. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. The, the 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 London Bridge, but like broken in half, yeah. something like that. As the as the as the icon on the site, yeah. beautiful. As far as late, <laughs> I I kind of like Scotty Pippen Jr. And oh yes, T Box, you're playing the hits, man. You're singing my music right now. I, I mean, love so, this guy. Someone someone's got to do something for him, and. Mm-hmm. He's kind of been the one. I mean, Gigi will have a game every once in a while, but not not all the time. But they, yeah. they need they gotta have somebody. And you know, they're like not gonna e- not gonna just score 60 points. Yeah. I mean, like, even if they like worst possible outcome, they score 80 or 85 points tonight and they get their doors blown off by 35, he still has to stay on the floor. Yeah, right? They, like yeah, they don't they, have five. They, yeah, they got seven bodies and I mean, maybe they get okay. Th- this this would be a good little exercise because like some of the sites are gonna have um, Jake Laravia in, and some of the sites are gonna have. Um, why am I blanking? Uh, who's the other guy? I think it was someone else with the Q tech. Let me here. Let me pull up the injury thing real quick. Jordan Goodwin. Um, I don't, yeah, I think Goodwin will play for sure unless there's something funky with the 10 day deal. So LaRavia has the Q tag. Oh, Lamar Stevens has the Q tag, which wouldn't impact his rotation at all because they're both, or he's big rather. I mean, they're both big and bigger than Scottie Pippen. But um, yeah, man, this team is just decimated right now. It's crazy, but, uh, right? Yeah, and then I think there's like dudes who aren't even in the player pool that are on Memphis playing tonight. Well, just you, you, you look at Memphis at the start of the year, and yeah, obviously John Morant was having his his suspension issues with the gun mm-hmm. thing, but <laughs> you knew they were still they're still a good team, and right to go from where you thought they'd be on opening day and then get job back after 10, 15, 20 games or whatever is this or 25 games. I think it might've been, but yeah, to get him back and hopefully, you know, they're playing about 500 ball and get job back and then go and wow. To yeah. what they are right now. It's, it's insane. We, can I ask you a question? Yeah. T-box. Yeah. This is where I was going to, I know what you're next at. season. Western conference finish five and a half place. For seven and a half, seven and a half. We changed it. Seven and a half finishing position for Memphis Grizzlies in the West next season. Will you take the higher as in better finishing position or lower as in worse? I'll take I'll actually take higher. I think I think they can go five or six. Damn yeah. straight. Yeah. Damn straight. Damn straight. That Weaver team like that. Because Newby, it's like, Newby threw a temper tantrum when we told him that we thought Memphis could be a, a fifth place team in the West next season. It was great television. I mean he got real. He got really mad when we told him they could be better than the T Wolf. Oh, he almost <laughs> punched a hole in the wall. Yeah, that that I can see. But I mean, Morant and JJJ and Bain. I mean, they're good players, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't even know what what he he's been out all year. Um, center guy. Stephen okay. Adams. Yeah, uh, Brandon Clark. No, Stephen Two. Adams, who yeah. who played who played whatever two years ago with him when they're when they're good. Obviously, he hasn't played all year. I, I don't know. I don't even know what's really wrong with him. But, um, but there's another one if he's still on the team that can play minutes. And you know, the, I don't know. I think they got a good team. Yeah, like they okay. So they still have Marcus Smart, and then 
you know, Vince Williams and Zyra Williams have both shown enough to be like rotational guys this sure. year. And then and then you could just go Scottie Pippen, Gigi Jackson. These guys are fringe NBAers, but like look the part right now, at least, as like you're like nine, ten guys. Like that feels like a decent roster. And we forgot Sa- Santi Aldama and Luke Kennard. Like those are two NBA bodies, like two two players that are capable of playing like 12, 15 minutes a night on a contending team. And those two, and th- that scrub team that you just identified beat the Bucks the last two times they played them. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the the one, yeah, the one that happened, I, I don't know, around Christmas time, it, just insane. I mean, that <laughs> it's like your lo- local D3 college beating UConn in a basketball game. Um, literally that's yeah. that's what it is man and then the, you guys had another bad loss there too to the raptors ended the raptors like 15 game skit or whatever yeah yeah and there was another one in there uh washington yes just yeah i don't know Crazy. they played they played down i don't even know if it's played down in a competition they just i don't know i think Giannis they, has been actually hurt with this hamstring thing and you saw it last night just kind of boil over where yeah. it was like he probably should have sat last night, like we talked on the show, for the Orlando game that was more important. But mm-hmm. that's neither here nor there. Um, all right. Any last guys that you want to throw your hat in the ring in? We mentioned uh, Zach Collins might find some minutes tonight without Wemby there. Um, maybe Trey Jones. We said these are the these are the real scroll the f down um, guys. Whether or not they make the player pool. I've taken a little bit of Nas Reed thus far. Yeah, yeah. I was um, just, I was just gonna say him. I mean, he's he's definitely a six rounder. He's got fresh legs too, because <laughs> of last night. Point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> were, were we are we hitting a sore spot there, Corey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go back to the um, all right. Let's uh let's hop in here and make it official. Let's um um actually make sure I don't save. All these guys at the top of the queue here. Um, you might run into some of my robots while we, oh, while we do this. Here we go. Drafting the T box with T box. You know, guys, I might have to change the icon. I have the headband oh, on. That's a good idea. I got the headband on in honor of it being a T box hoops day here, <laughs> but I got the purple because I've been down bad. But I'm going full to identity back, theft. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone back to back to back top three finishes in the $100 uh, baseball contest. Now, guys, I am not down bad anymore. I might have to go and rip off T-Box's emoji, and we all got to play like T-Box today. There you go. Refresh your uh, your your screen there, John Boy. Is is the Nez one going to change? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, here we go. I'm going to do it on my phone while we do it, too, so we can get them in here. That's amazing. we got to start the trend. Yeah, everyone, when you guys see this live in 25 minutes from now, everyone change your emote to the poodle with the goat horns if you can afford them. And, <laughs> if you and, can afford them. <laughs> and, and the that orange. orange backdrop. We didn't we gotta even pay our respects today. We didn't even like mention how dope the image is for your contest, T-Box. I mean, I, I like it. Yeah. That is so fire. To, to get the poodle with the ball and the like that's just so yep. good so had band on them too yeah yeah that's awesome yeah i was one i was well because i knew the contest was coming i was curious what they're gonna do i i'm like are they gonna you know, go. two, are they gonna <laughs> nice this is so, so good because we're side by side too that's so i get to get yeah. a little screen grab here yeah please do It'd be awesome like yeah that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I know you're. Uh, I know you're a big dailies guy, obviously. Uh, yeah. But are you da- are you dabbling in the dance at all? I have not done any playoff NBA yet. Gotcha. Uh, I, I probably will, but but I'll just fire off my typical ten and, uh-huh. and just see what happens. But just because I do few, I I mean I I want to definitely pick the teams that are in the playoffs for sure. Yeah, so that's why I haven't been doing it. I mean, there's a lot of strategy to the people that do it for sure, but I just, we, I just, sorry, I sorry to cut you off. Yes, we, we're, we're on the clock right now. 
Is this Anthony Edwards? Is this Kyrie Irving? Uh, is this, is this game? I would I would go Edwards. Okay, Edwards, it is. Yeah, it's just on my Here phone. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll tell you who's kind of like available at each at, at each time here, so that you're like. So the the top three went Jokic, Luca, SGA. So no real concerns there from the these people in the lobbies, and then Ant with us. So it's good to know that people have no fear of the of that top three. So who'd you take, Nez? Uh, I went Dame. Okay, I, I I've got Dame pushed up. Nice. Um, yeah, just thinking that they kind of need to win this game. And uh, Giannisless Dame, I think, is uh, a usage monster, even though we haven't really seen it come to fruition just yet. But like, you just know, right? Like, those so much of that offense now becomes Dame's and Bobby Bobby Portis's. I'm gonna have a ton of Bobby Portis. We'll see if uh, I get beat to the Bobby Portis punch in this in this room. And the great part is no one's listening to you right now. To I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's You're actually a wrong. nice little yeah, it's a nice little trend that you can actually openly talk about it. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just tweeting out this this Abby change. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker, Dejounte Murray, Q tag, or the Miami guys. Now here's where I've been going Booker the whole time. That's why I got I have a lot of them. Um, should we should we hold the course with that? This is a T box team. Yeah, we'll should we hold the it. course. Go for it. Right. More Booker <laughs> projections would agree that that you're that you're on it with with Book. I mean, yeah, the nuances and the context of playoffs implications and whatnot could throw like a serious wrench in in that play. But like, if we just think about it, like that context aside, like Book against the Clippers without these players are is you know on any on any other slate a great a great pick. Yeah. So I, I like where your head's at with that. All right. It's officially a movement, gentlemen. That's awesome. I hope we, I hope we end up seeing like full lobbies of the T box, <laughs> Abby. Like that's just how you know that we've gone full, like parabolic with this, which yeah, is already hard to believe that we're at where we're at with this to begin with. If you can get like a top five, fin- <laughs> if you can get a top five finish of all different people, but the same emoji. Oh my oh, goodness. So good. A leaderboard takeover. Come on. The brand would have the brand could never be stronger than just a top twenty filled with orange goat poodles. <laughs> um, yeah, what's, and what's what's hilarious with that too is that that's the I mean obviously not the goat horns but that's the original one that was ha- given to me. That's your OG Which dog. You just, yeah, yeah, you just never deviated. Never changed. That's great. That's, that's awesome. That's beautiful. A man of tradition. <laughs> Where did you get? Uh, oh, let's make the pick here. Oh, I'm. I imagine I know the answer to this one. Is it is it Bridges for you right here, or should we be pushing up uh, Westbrook or Jared Allen? What do you like? Do a do a Westbrook because I don't think he's going to come back to you. <laughs> okay, that would have been my pick. You like Westbrook more than Bridges right now? Yes. I just, yes. I don't know. I have Bridges is a tough one too. Like, it, if you have a ton of them, he can he can hurt you. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen a ceiling game from Miles Bridges in a while. We talked about it yesterday. How it's like with Trey Mann there, uh, with Michich there. Like they, there's just not as much handling for him. And the the off ball uh, games that we've seen that are big have come from Brandon Miller, not from Miles Bridges for whatever yeah. reason. It's a good point. Um, I was going to ask you, though, T-Box, did you get in the daytime diamond streets today? There was 20, 20 entry max there. Did you get those yeah, ones in yeah. as well? Yeah, I, I maxed that. And then um, nice. I think I have 60 lineups in the daytime diamond. Oh, you're already up that. that, that you're already up uh, to 60 yeah. in that as well. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. I did my ranks for early baseball first, then late baseball, then NBA. And then, like I said, then I... Did you have any Edouard Julien in the daytime diamond? Because I did not. I did not. No, me neither. 33 yeah. from really? him. 33 oh, points? Correct. He homered twice? I oh, guess. we're up. Um, Chet, Garland, Jamal Murray, Q-Tag, 
Brandon Miller, Bobby Portis. Anyone that you like, T Box? Go Brandon Miller and hope Portis comes back. Okay, let's do it. I like I it. Like We're Garland scrolling right now. Yeah, we scrolling. are. Got, we got a good scroll going on. I do like that. The brands are merging. Brandon Miller could absolutely go off against Atlanta tonight. I think it's a like why take Miles Bridges when you can have Brandon Miller around later, you know? Right. Or earlier in the day, four rounds later. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. There goes Bobby um, Bobby Poe. Okay. We got a lot of. There's going to be a lot of runs scored on this slate. I'm not scared of Julian right now. I'm yeah. going to put that on the record. I'm not scared of Edward Julian's 33 right now. I have no Julian and I'm breaking even. So there's that. Well, the games have barely started in S. Daniel. Still. <laughs> to have to have none. That's true. I have none too. In my 20 lineups, I have one Minnesota Twin player. Because I'm a Bobby Miller respecter. Yeah. And also the twins just strike out a shit ton and mm-hmm. that ballpark's awful and the weather wasn't great. Yeah, all that good stuff. Yeah. How so naturally good, John? Ju- so naturally Julian has 33 points right now. Of course. I mean, that's anytime that you have a good process, it's always gonna kick you in the ass. <laughs> okay, we're we're on the clock here. Uh yeah. What do you like here, T Box? We got um we got Beal, Claxton, Cabela, Scotty Pippen, Tyler Hero. What do you like? Are you in the fifth right now? Yeah, fifth round. Try your Jamal Murray and and just hope. Yeah. Okay. You don't get the swap. Yeah, the problem is I won't have T box here when it's time to swap, and I'll fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him on speed dial. Keep, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're on retainer. Hey, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you told me to draft Jamal Murray. Yeah. You told me to take Jamal Murray and Russell Westbrook and then post sitting. That's yeah. a fraud. Er- earlier in the show, you're talking more. You thought he was doleful. No, you're taking him. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get us canceled again. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wow, Capella in the fifth now. I mean, makes sense with all the bodies potentially out. Where where did Trey Young go in this one? Wow, up to seventeen to Nez. Yeah, Camp I had him Thomas pushed up. There. Um, I'm I'm moving him back because, uh, that's that's aggressive, just based on a I, short sample that I've seen. Dude, could you imagine if Trey plays and Dejounte doesn't today? That's kind of what I'm like trying to get ahead of. You know. It's it's not it's within the realm of possibility. IQ went at fourteen in this one. Wow. Um, Bradley Beal, Scotty Pippen, Tyler yeah. Hero, Josh Giddy, Zach Collins, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Who do you like I would, there? I, I would go with the Pippen right here. Yes, yes. This is this is what I needed to hear. SPJ baby. Anytime I can be incentivized by someone smarter than me to take someone that I like. I am 100% going to do it. <laughs> Nothing feels better than your priors getting confirmed by someone you respect. Oh, yes, exactly. And my priors always get confirmed by Nez, but I don't respect him, so it's completely <laughs> different. <laughs> oh, Please. man. Uh, all right, that was a fun team there, T-Box. We, we, uh, we donned the logo out of respect for you. Hopefully more people, now that you're watching, follow and do the same. Pay respects to the T-Box contest by pivoting to the orange poodle with the goat horns there. But we went Anthony Edwards, Devin Booker, Russell Westbrook pushing up there. We think he plays for the record. Um, Brandon Miller. Oh, shoot. Brandon Miller, uh, Jamal Murray, Q-Tag, and Scotty Pippen Jr. There we go. Nez, what did you finish that one with? Ooh, man. I think it was Dame Lillard. I can't remember my second round pick. Trey Young. Trey in the third. Yeah. Clint Capella, Yusuf Nurkic. I can't remember those other two, but like my teams are going to look like Trey Young, Yusuf Nurkic, Clint Capella. Um, Did you go to Rand? I, I mean, I got so many drafts. 
going yeah, right projection now. darling guys there yeah i mean dude today's so murky like i'm just kind of um you know leaving it to the to the projection gods to make my decisions today <laughs> um uh all right let's tie a bow on that drafting the t-box with t-box uh had a nice little catch up off the jump there very thankful you did not get us canceled this time i know <laughs> yeah. you got i know you got a so, hard out here my friend to uh to maintain that new fitness regime that you got going dude keep at it that's uh that's great we're so proud of you for the 100 days smoke free uh well deserved to uh, have the co- contest in the lobbies in your honor. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Underdog just in general. We've been singing their praises all show, but just for doing that. Um, T-Box, my man, what, what do you got to say to the people here? Yeah, good luck tonight. Obviously, it's a it's an oddball slate. Um, to Underdog, thank you so much. And also, Rake Back Wednesday, that should be hitting soon if it hasn't hit already. That's right, baby. <laughs> Give yeah. us a little rake back dance on the treadmill yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> nice. Yeah. We got the rake back. Um, yeah, no, obviously rake back, I typically just run it back through, but yep. I did buy my new set of golf clubs with just rake back money. Ooh. Uh, back, what are we looking in, at? I bought a new set of Max Flies. Uh, yeah, and that was back back in October. If they still have the plastic on them, never, never even used them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The but down season. This. Yeah. Well, T Box will be out on the T Box uh soon here with those uh Don and the Fresh clubs. I actually got a golf town gift card burning a hole in my pocket right now. Oh, buddy. I'm looking for, nice. I'm in the business of a I'm thinking new big stick this year. I think it's time. I think uh I think I want to get one of them Sims twos or something like that, but no free nice. ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, all right. Uh actually. T-Box, before we leave, before we yeah. tie a bow on this, I got to ask you, uh, for the for the people drafting um, the the main slate of baseball there, who is our who is our pick to click tonight? Who is the guy that you like uh, thus far in your drafts? Oh, man, I'd have to look at that because I've been paying attention to basketball so much, I t- totally forgot that I was even doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird. My my one on one is is Jordan. All right, um, that's Jordan, what I, baby. That's what I had number one on one. Um, but yeah, I, I had Alvarez, Acuna, Judge, Soto. So I was starting out definitely with outfielders. Yep, Stroman. Stroman, right. Stroman is my first pitcher off the board. Yep. Um, yeah. Beautiful. But, yeah. No. I, usually, I don't know. Baseball, I, I, I typically go for the high total, the high totals, and try to pair them up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not scared to do a whole team onslaught. Uh, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll do my rankings, at least what I do, at least for an auto guy. Mm-hmm. I'll do my rankings and just throw in like 20, 20 drafts. So then I got kind of a head start. Then I'll enter, okay, I'm going to do a Houston onslaught. I'm going to do this onslaught, a Braves onslaught. I'm going to do a Braves whatever. And then I just put them in my queue. Um, and then whatever happens, happens. I'm sure I end up pissing somebody off because, <laughs> you know, they, they're they going for something else. And where the hell did that pick come from? Like, yep. Yeah. But because I'm not there taking the time, it's just my it's my way of kind of setting up a 3-2 a <laughs> without doing it, without physically doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. <laughs> I love it. Oh, all right. Um, again, congratulations, Corey. This is uh, it's awesome that we were able to have you on. Awesome that we were able to have this contest up in the lobbies. Best of luck, man. If there was one night, I genuinely want someone other than me to take down the 10K. <laughs> this is from the bottom of my heart. I would love you to win this contest tonight. I'll donate $750 and 150 max entries if it guarantees that you win this contest because it would be such an absurd, great story. So I love that yeah, so much. That'd, that'd be crazy. So I'm rooting for me too. <laughs> if, not, uh, if, not, if not, if it's just someone that we know, that's that'd be awesome. Absolutely. You're a good guy, man. Yeah. Um, Nez, any parting words for the people? I'll see you in the lobbies and like the video. This is a, And leave a comment yeah. since this is a real-life YouTube video. Leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, follow 
Corey on Twitter as well. Uh, there, we appreciate we you as always, T Box, right. for coming on, man. You're yep. such a legend. You guys, man. you're a blast to have on. Thanks. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, change your uh, change your avatars to uh, to uh, the orange poodle with the goat horns one last time. Pay respects to the Mount Rushmore legend. Uh, if you're not playing on Underdog Fantasy, promo code MLB at sign up. 100% match deposit up to 100 USD. You can play alongside the three of us and you can play them sweet, sweet pick them entries as well. Uh, I'm not allowed to say lock of the century, but absolute lock of the century. Uh, yeah. Ado- Adolis Garcia lower on the home runs. <laughs> All right. I'm playing it. I'm playing We're it. We're playing it. All right, guys. Uh, everybody's favorite time on the show. The end. Peace. Later, guys. Thank you.